His match point in the Junior GP World Championship as Jose Rueda looks to clinch the inaugural crown on the biggest stage of them all. The stars of the future have their chance to shine alongside their MotoGP heroes here in Misano. This iconic circuit has played host to many a MotoGP moment down the years and Rueda's closest challengers will be hoping yet more drama can delay the Spaniards' celebrations. 81 points is the 16-year-old's current title lead, meaning first or second today will be enough for Rueda to join an illustrious list of junior world champions. It's Jack Appleyard and Elliot York here to talk you through all 17 laps of action coming your way shortly. And last time out, Elliot, the talented teenager, bagged a fifth win in six races in dominant fashion, but it was typically hectic stuff in the fight for the podium places behind. Yeah, it really was, Jack. Really excited to see what Rueda can do today and the rest of the pack, of course. It really was another commanding victory for the title leader. Here is the action, the highlights from last time out over at the Algarve International Circuit. You can see here the battle for second and third, the final podium places. Rueda there already not long into the distance there, but he did eventually win by a considerable 6.5 seconds. Yet another commanding win. And it did all come down to the last lap in the podium fight. And this was the incident here, Dan Stone, on a nasty crash. David Alonso going down there after contact with his teammate, Filippo Fabio, Harrison Voigt as well going down. Thankfully, both of them were okay. But it was that man, Jose Antonio Rueda, seemingly unstoppable Jose Antonio Rueda, who took another victory, Jack. Sensational stuff. Yeah, truly was sensational from the 16-year-olds. The Moto3 World Championship is beckoning for him. There is absolutely no doubt about that. I have heard we're going to hear news fairly soon, either this weekend or possibly next, about where he will be going. I think it may well be an orange machine, but more on that later as we welcome you live to the Masano World Circuit. Marco Simoncelli has been tuning in for MotoGP qualifying. I can confirm that yes, it is Saturday. Yes, it is exactly the same day. But thankfully, those rain clouds that disrupted MotoGP Q2 have dissipated and the sun is now beating down on this iconic circuit. And here is the man that will fire away from pole position. Third in the World Championship at the moment and about to fire away from a debut pole position. He certainly is, yeah. Hard to believe, really, that he's not had a pole position this year. He's also not had a win this year and in the junior GP class ever. So David Salvador, like you say, Jack, third in the overall standings, still has an outside chance of claiming the title. He's one of the main contenders who can stop Rueda from claiming the title today. But it is that man, Jose Antonio Rueda, the man of the moment in Junior GP, who starts alongside him in second place. The champagne is on ice. It's as simple as that. His lead at the moment, 81 points over teammate Cy Rufferdin Asman. The magic number that we'll be reminding you throughout this 17-lap event is 75 points, as long as Rueda can keep hold of a 75-point advantage when the chequered flag comes out. He will be crowned the very first Junior GP World Champion. And given his recent form, as we said, five wins out of the last six races, the only anomaly in there, second place. So he's in pretty good form. Very good for me. I was just racking some numbers earlier on today and his win margins, apart from the second race in Valencia, have just been pretty ridiculous, to be honest. Outrageously good. Valencia, he won by a tenth of a second, but then in Barcelona, he won race one by 11.3 seconds, race two by 8.1 seconds. Then we went to Jerez and in race two, he won by 8.7 seconds. And then last time in Portimao, he won by, won by 6.5 seconds. So... Yeah, he has literally been pretty much in unstoppable form and it's just so impressive the way he's winning, Jack. We know Moto3 class are all, always really, really tight. So to be winning by that margin across any class is super, super impressive. But to do it in the Moto3 class, it just beggars belief. Unbelievable. Yeah, really does. Leading the Red Bull rookies at the moment as well. So it's no surprise that his name has been linked with a move to the KTM Motorsport Junior program, either with Akiayo or Hervé Poncheral in 2023. Here are a couple of the other Estrella Galicia team riders. We saw the number 18 there, Angel Piqueras, on the outside of the front row. The rookie doing a pretty good job in his first year in Junior GP. A couple of podiums to his name so far. Third place he picked up in Jerez 
and second in Valencia earlier in the year. And then on the outside of the second row of the grid, the man closest to Rueda in the championship, Syrufuddin Asman. Can he stop those celebrations from happening? And here is David Alonso, the current Red Bull Rookies champion. And he's got a, a pretty good man holding the umbrella up as well. That, of course, the man that uh, Jose Rueda is hoping to join. We mentioned that illustrious list of former champions. So there's one of them, Ethan Guevara, helping out his uh, teammates in the junior Aspar team, David Alonso. Yeah, not a bad man to be holding your umbrella and to have by his side, of course, in the same outfit, the Aspar uh, ranks. You go from, obviously, junior world championship, even the ETC, they've got uh, a team in there as well. A, a brilliant setup for the riders, including David Alonso to come through. It's not been the season maybe we would have expected Jack or not David Alonso um, would have expected from David uh, this season in 2022. We sort of expected him to come in and really fight for the title. It hasn't quite panned out that way. Still has a win to his name, but hasn't been on the podium since. So uh, today in Mazzano in front of the Grand Prix paddock course is a chance for him to right the wrongs, let's say, of uh, a couple of the last races. Of course, we saw uh, last time out, he was unlucky to be caught up in that uh, term one instant with his teammate who is here, Filippo Farioli. He was definitely the, the favourite coming into this season was David Alonso. So only David Salvador, the, the man that starts from pole position, was higher in last year's championship that hasn't moved on to a permanent place on the Moto3 World Championship grid. Given the fact that he won the Red Bull Rookies Cup, everyone was saying that he's the man to beat this year, but he just hasn't been able to put it together so far. Maybe he can turn it around here in Masano and put a good string of results together ahead of coming back and potentially fighting for the Junior GP crown next year. Or, as I've heard, move up to the World Championship full-time with that gas, gas, gas. Aspar squad. Teasing us today, aren't you, mate, with all know, this uh, little juicy rumours? Well, I've, I've been sort of in the... Uh in the office all weekend. I've been waiting to get these rumours out. <laughs> I've been hearing, you know, an opportunity to go out, have a coffee here, have a coffee there. But <laughs> here we go then. It's time for Junior GP action in Messana with Salvador starting from pole. Looking forward to this one. Match point Saturday for Jose Antonio Rueda. It's David Salvador, title chasing Rueda and Piqueras on the front row with Asman, Alonso and Vai on the second row. Felipe Farioli, Lineta and Cruces round out your top nine in qualifying. Row four is wildcard Ferrandez from Lambias and Rosenthaler. Row five is Zuratuza from Buchanan, another wildcard and Detweiler. Row six is Shariel, Morossi and Tascorn Boazri. Row seven is led by Soma Gorbe, Casey O'Gorman, another wildcard rider there in 20th. Aditama, row eight is Ralston, Tietzi and Uchumi. Row nine is Hamada, Philip Ton and Gordon. Row 10 is Eddie O'Shea's replacement, Al Sahuti, Gordon in 29th, Austin in 30th. Ruda has a back of the grid penalty after qualifying in 11th. And Torin Collins, another rider who has a back of the grid penalty, rounding out the runners and riders for Mizano. And who has a problem there, Jack? That looks like David Alonso from here. Is it or is it Felipe Farioli? It's definitely one of the gas gas ass bad guys. It's Alonso, it the man that's supposed to fire away from the middle of the second row of the grid. They're going to have to pull him into pit lane and it will be a pit lane start for the Colombian. Well, drama before we've even got underway here in Mizano. What were we saying about him trying to right the wrongs of some of the races this season? And it's an absolute disaster then for David Alonso. Starting from pit lane, that's pretty much race over. If he gets to the points from there, um, it's a very commendable effort. So unfortunately there for the Colombian, but perfect conditions then for the riders. Do we think we can uh, see a title today? Jack won by Jose Antonio Rueda. It's going to be hard to bet against him, but Asman and Salvador have both been in good form. So it's going to be interesting, isn't it? It certainly is. If you're looking at the form book, then you're a brave man to bet against Jose Rueda wrapping it up today. Uh, just looking at the times and throughout uh, the three practice sessions we've had here in qualifying yesterday, it looks as though there is a bit of a gap four or five riders potentially have the pace to be able to pull away in this one. But we always look at the form book ahead of junior GP races, ahead of Moto3 World Championship races. And by the time we get to the end of lap one, we've quickly thrown that out the window. That could be the case here today. But that is the championship picture then. 81 points 
is the young Spaniard's advantage over the Malaysian Asman. 83 back is Salvador with Piqueras just about in championship contention still, but only just as well. It's going to take victory for Piqueras to be able to stand the chance of remaining in this one. As we said, the magic number, 75 points. If he's still that far ahead, come the end of these 17 laps, then we have ourselves a junior GP champion. The first few laps is going to be very interesting indeed because we've seen so many times this year that Rueda started from the front row or pole position. He's been in the mix um, in the first few laps. The riders have been able to ruffle him up, but as soon as he gets sort of uh, over half second advantage and when the riders are squabbling behind, he's been able to really stretch his lead and then it's the race gone for um, the competitors behind. So it's going to be really interesting to see how Rueda starts, how the likes of David Salvador and particularly um, sorry for Nazman start because um, they're the two really who need to win this race needs to at least beat Rueda and then see what happens to Rueda. Remember, we're going to have a gap in the middle of the second row. David Alonso, the reigning Red Bull Rookies Cup champion, having to start from pit lane after seemingly stalling it on the grid. No such problems for our front row, though. Salvador on pole for the very first time and possibly our champion elect Rueda there in ninth. What could Piqueras do from third? It's lights out and we're off here in Masano. We've already seen one champion crown today. Are we about to see another? Salvador with a great start. But already the Australia Galicia bikes ganging up on him behind. But it will be the Husqvarna that leads us through the opening couple of corners here in Italy. Asman got the start he would have wanted from the second row. He's already ahead of Jose Antonio Rueda. There they are at the front of your picture. The two on very, very similar bikes indeed. But it's Rueda going to dive at the inside of Asman. The top two in the championship battling it out early doors. That's Filippo Farioli. Got an all right start from seventh place. Adrian Cruz is up there. And that is Jari Zuratuza. He's crashed at, well, af just after turn two, so hopefully the rookie is OK. Yeah, fingers crossed. Zuratuza, of course, a man that came into this championship with high, high hopes, having been so, so successful in the European Talent Cup this year. Hasn't gone to plan so far for him, and that's a, a frustrating end to his uh, junior GP race here in Masano. Fingers crossed, all OK. The marshals on hand straight away, as there goes Rueda, already looking to make moves up the inside of Piqueras and slotting into second place quite nicely. Something's happened to Asman, Jack. Didn't quite see it on our screens, but he slipped down to sixth place, I think it is. Yeah, sixth place. The top three already breaking clear slightly, so didn't see what happened to Asman there, but really now has work to do, has the number 63. He's just there, coming into the back of your picture in the middle of the chasing pack. So, yeah, not sure what happened. would be good to get a replay, but a good start from Moreira. He's up into second place now. He's going backwards, is Asman. There's another man firing up the inside of the Malaysian. He looked like he had good pace to be able to contend right to the front of this one, but something just not right for the 63 at the moment is all the way down in eighth. So this is great news for Rueda if things stay as they are. Of course, we've not yet completed one lap of 17, but Rueda will be champion. We'll keep you updated throughout this one. But as we start the second lap, it's still Salvador that leads the way. So far, so good for the experienced Spaniard. Don't forget, he's got world championship experience in his back pocket from this year. Filling in in the Husqvarna Max Racing Squad and doing a good job at every opportunity as well. So he knows how to fight it out with the best of them. Rueda then taking the lead down into turn four. A classic move here at Mazzano, but David Salvador is having none of it. Bites straight back. That's exactly what he's got to do. But the number 99 <laughs> of Rueda bites straight back again. Fascinating stuff here on lap two. Oh, this is what we love to see in junior GP. These guys do not give an inch. Three corners, three overtakes, and here we go down in towards Quircher Curve. And it looks as though Piqueras is going to try and roll around the outside of the pair of them. The blue bikes go wide, the yellow bike goes to the inside, and it it looks as though Salvador is going to take back the lead, but here comes Rueda once more. Oh, this one has sparked into life on lap two. Fantastic racing here in Junior GP. It always is, isn't it? I'm just intrigued to see what Angel Picaris' tactics are going to be in this race. He obviously knows that Rueda has the chance to clinch the title. They are teammates, but Angel Picaris still winless in his rookie season. He's had a fantastic rookie season as Angel Picaris says that's Colin Vire getting very close to the rear of the number 18. Colin Vire, of course, round the outside. Aww. What a move into one of the fastest parts of the circuit. And is he going to go up into second ahead of Salvador? I think he is. Class from the Jerez winner from earlier on in the season. Brilliant stuff from the Dutchman. Second in the Red Bull Rookies Cup at the moment, so we know he's capable of this. Let's not forget when we were here 12 months ago, Vaya clinched fourth at that time, a career-best finish. He was actually the top man who hasn't moved on to the Grand Prix paddock since then. And it looks as though he's back at Masano and he's loving it once more. Salvador got the better of him, but not for long. Here comes the 95. 
big look up the inside, but no way through. And good to see as well, uh, as that's Felipe Farioli moving down your time sheets. But we can see the seven. Oh. It's still there. Big crash. Big crash in the background. Didn't spot who it was. One of the Cuna de Campeones bikes, I think. We'll let you know who it was in a second. There's the 11 of Adrian Cruces. So it wasn't Noah him and he's Noah Detweiler, unfortunately, that's gone down. What a shame. Detweiler was due to go through the long lap penalty after knocking someone off in qualifying yesterday, but he won't be able to take that after a big, big high side there. Great to see he's onto his feet, though, thankfully. Yeah, huge high side there coming out of turn two. So turn two's um, caught out two riders early in this race. Angel Piqueras there, I'm not sure what happened to him. Um, he's dropping down like a stone through the chasing pack. Not a good opening to lap three. It is for Angel Piqueras. He's now at the back of this group with Rueda leading. I was going to say before uh, the drama happened, Jack, it was crucial that David Salvador um, held off Colin Vire because now he can get uh, chasing uh, Marcos Rueda. Jose Antonio Rueda, sorry, Marcos Ruda, way down the field after his penalty. Um, but obviously Rueda now into his rhythm. We've seen it so many times this year. This is crucial for David Salvador. Yeah, these are ominous signs, this. Rueda at the front, able to get into his rhythm as Piqueras looks to fight back through after an earlier error. There he goes up the inside of teammate Asman. But as we say, at the front, these are crucial, crucial moments for Salvador. We've seen it oh so often this year. If Rueda is allowed to get into his rhythm, he will just clear off. Salvador cannot allow that to happen. He tucks him behind the 99. The pocket rocket 99 is going to be difficult to draft past, but the Husqvarna looks like it's got the legs, not just unable to move through at turn one. Salvador having a look at the inside at turn one, but he has bridged the gap, which is the most important thing for now. Obviously, plenty of time left to go. Sets the fastest lap of the race at 143.448, just under a second off what they were doing in qualifying yesterday evening. But yeah, crucial this for David Salvador. Just checking on Cyrus Nasman. He's dropped back down to eighth. He's just behind Angel Piqueras. I think that's Adrian Cruz as well. He's behind. So Asman needs to start making progress because Rueda and Salvador are setting a great pace at the front. Yeah, they're just starting to stretch the pack out ever so slightly. Farioli got himself in front of Colin Vaya as there goes Luca Linetta. That's a late, <laughs> late move, but he just about gets it done up the inside of Vaya to take fourth spot away from the Dutchman. He pushes the Dutchman wide as well, and then suddenly he's under all kinds of pressure from Piqueras. He's going to look to go around the outside. He's got Asman looking up the inside, but neither of them can get through. Looks like Felipe Farioli's got his head down as well. He's caught up to the back of David Salvador. Good news for David Salvador. He'll want someone else or want plenty of others to try and ruffle the feathers of Rueda because as things stand, or if Salvador uh, wins the race and Rueda finishes second, that will still hand the title to Rueda. So important for David Salvador to try and get ahead now to try and just disrupt the rhythm of Rueda. But Felipe Farioli, as we know, isn't scared of a move or two as Angel Piqueras dives up the inside at turn 14, the tight hairpin. I think we're going to see plenty of action down there in the closing stages. Yeah, we certainly are. But the, the issue that these guys behind are having, via Piqueras, Lanetta, the more and more that they fight as Farioli goes high, wide and handsome there. That's one track limits warning for sure. He tucks in behind Salvador and he is going to make a move here, potentially slightly dubious if he gets it done, but he <laughs> decides against it and settles into third. But Farioli, once he's got ahead of Vaya, he's really caught up onto the rear wheel of both Salvador and Rueda, the Italian looking pretty strong on home soil. Yeah, I remember back in Barcelona, he came from way down the field, or he had a bad start anyway, and had a couple of seconds at least to bridge uh, to the podium fight. Moreda was already up the road and winning the race, but Farioli, he's done this a few times this year. He's managed to get in front and bridge a gap uh, to the chasing pack. So, yeah, Farioli doing very well here, sets a new fastest lap race, unsurprisingly so, and the others, led by Colin Vaya and Angel Piqueras, are now closing in. So good news for David Salvador and Syrofin and Asman there in the pack as well. Yeah, good lap that as well, a 43.2, around three quarters of a second slower than what they did in qualifying as Vaya once again finds a late, late move. Lynetta, the ultimate opportunist, looking to squeeze through as well as we head down towards Cavoni here. This is a brave section of track. Piqueras with a move up the inside, gets it done. The pair of them need to be careful. They stay in track limits there. Asman looking for a way through as well. But he decides against it, I think, rather wisely. Turn 12, you've got to be uh, rather brave to pick your way through there. But we did warn that Rueda, if he's allowed to get into his rhythm and lead for a couple of laps, he could pull clear. But that's not been the case so far. Salvador is keeping him honest. 
Yeah, he certainly is. And we've seen across the season, Rueda has sometimes had a little bit of an edge. We've seen it in qualifying, but Salvador was a couple of tenths clear of Rueda in qualifying. He's right up the, the rear wheel of Rueda. He's going to make a move into turn one, not quite this time around. No need to panic yet. No need to be making rash decisions yet. 12 laps to go, plenty of time. Uh, for David Salvador to try and make a move. Pekeras is recovering nicely after dropping down the field a couple of laps uh, ago. But yeah, like you said at the beginning of the programme, Jack, the riders have had pretty similar pace, all these guys at the front. Qualifying was a little bit stretched out, but qualifying can sometimes be a little bit messy, can't it? Uh, but yeah, Vereda hasn't had necessarily the stronger pace that he's shown at some of the rounds this season. No, definitely. That's not the case at all. This is not going to the script we've seen over the previous couple of months in Junior GP as Farioli looks to make his move. Big look up the inside, but no way through. And again, Piqueras, after that mistake a couple of laps ago, he's regrouped really, really well as the young Spaniard, only 15 years of age, has to wait until the 1st of December to turn 16. But look at that. He's already got bags of talent, bags of experience as well. I mean, had a couple of years in the European Talent Cup, two successful years as well. But for a rookie, he can hold his own against these guys at the front. Yeah, he really can. Unsurprisingly, he's set two fastest sectors of the race. So Angel Piqueras is on for... Uh, fastest lap of the race here, he's back up into third place and if you're a keen or avid watcher of the Junior GP this year, you remember back in Valencia where he came oh. from the back of the grids, he's made his way past his teammates, so that's interesting. He has Rueda, blinks, he makes a mistake, a very, very rare mistake from the young Spaniard. He has to regroup now after being shuffled back to third, both Salvador and teammate Piqueras taking advantage of that one. It's the championship pressure and everything that everyone has been telling him all week on just starting to get into the back of his head because if things stay as they are, well, in typical fashion, as we see in Junior GP, that changes just as I say. Oh, he won't be winning move. the championship. Arioli, that is brave to try and get through there. Raider will hold the inside line through turn three, but having been compromised, it looks as though Farioli might be able to squeeze through at four. No, he doesn't, and that's a shame. Casey O'Gorman, the wild card, stepping up from the Hawkers European Talent Cup for this weekend only. Unfortunately, crashing out. A great shame, but one of the, the big British hopes is Casey O'Gorman doing great guns in the Red Bull Rookies Cup at the moment. He'll be back in action in two weeks' time in Aragon. Unfortunately, this first foray into the Junior World Championship not gone to plan for him now. Yeah, qualified 10, 20th did O'Gorman. So a great showing here in Mazzano, value of experience gained. Um, as I was saying about Bikeras, Jack, in Valencia, he came from the back of the grid uh, and nearly won the race. He came from, yeah, the, the back of the grid and took maybe five, six laps from memory. Um, to come to the front. <laughs> so he's a very, very fast rider, is Angel Piqueras, and he is still in his debut season. So really want to watch for the future. He did run onto the green there, so he's got to be a little bit careful as Piqueras because he's going to get a track limit warning soon if he does that too many times. But it's going to be interesting now to see what Salvador does. Now he's not got Rueda in front of him. Is he going to try and make a move as soon as possible and try and break clear? We'll wait and see as Asman is starting to pick his way through as well. So good stuff from Asman. He's trying to recover, just getting past. Um, Luca Lunetta there, the number 58. Here we go then, into the final corner as they come back through across the line. There'll be just 10 laps to go here in Masano. And this has not gone how we expected it to. Rueda, despite showing strong pace for out free practice and was looking at the form book, hasn't been able to pull clear of these two. Instead, it's been Piqueras, who, despite a mistake, has battled back through. And Salvador, who's been looking strong all weekend, the debut pole position, can he convert it into a debut win? We've got 10 laps to wait and see. But these three just starting to detach themselves now, Elliot. Farioli can see that as well. After having made a mistake of his own, he's battled back through to fourth and is quickly getting his head down to try and make sure that this leading triplet can't break clear. Yeah, don't be surprised if the number seven with the bright yellow helmet does reel these guys in uh, in quick time. Rueda, yeah, looking looking like he's regained a bit of composure. I think what you were saying about pressure, Jack, obviously this weekend, especially being in the Grand Prix paddocks as well, it's just going to add a little bit of pressure, isn't it, onto the young shoulders of Rueda. But he's dealt with any pressure that's come his way so far this year expertly, and he's recovered well there. That is Asman, I think, running wide at turn 10 so not good there from the number 63 he's going to drop behind Alberto Fernandez who we should mention is doing a cracking job um, as a wildcard rider in the league group fantastic stuff from the purple machine there at the back of your picture 
Uh, one thing we'll have to keep our eye on as well is Piqueras getting a track limits warning because for the second lap in the row, he was way, way, way onto the green on the exit of Tremonto. If he does that another time, then the stewards will be taking a look at it. He'll be surely getting a warning momentarily and then another offence and he'll be having to go through the long lap penalty loop. There's Asman though, back down to ninth place now as a result of that mistake. What did we say? The number seven, Felipe Farolio, didn't take him long, did it? Got rid of uh, the chasing pack, got into the front, and now he has latched himself onto the rear end of the number 99, Rueda Codenvire, leading the way in fifth place. Asman has a lot of work to do now after that mistake. He's a good 1.5 seconds off the lead now, so Asman, with nine laps to go, does now need to start overtaking the riders in front of him and trying to bridge the gap if he's got any chance of trying to catch and pass Rueda. So it's Piqueras that leads then here in Masano with Salvador and the Husqvarna just settling in behind as we head down towards Quercia. Rueda tucked in there. He's the man that we'll be keeping our eye on, the champion elect. 81 points clear, remember, but really the number we should be looking at now is 83 points because Asman, the man second in the championship, is just starting to fade out of contention. Salvador remaining there, though. He's third in the title chase at the moment, as here comes Farioli, the gas gas man, on the curb on the inside at turn nine before then getting it stopped at turn ten to take third spot away from Rueda. But the 16-year-old battles back. Here we go, side by side on the run down towards Cavoni. Who's going to be bravest of the two? Rueda has just got enough in that Honda machine to be able to edge in front. And now Salvador looking for a move. Surely he's not going to go through at turn 12, he thinks better of it, but it behind Farioli, a bit braver, actually does make the move, and Rueda battles back straight away. These two have got a bit of history. Farioli, well, we know he definitely likes to get his elbows out at every given opportunity, and that's exactly the same here today. And just as we said, Piqueras, after those two indiscretions on the exit of Tremonto, has got himself now a track limits warning. So your race leader is going to have to be careful for these remaining eight laps. He does, and I saw Rueda also dip his tyres onto the green on the exit of turn 15 a few corners ago. So Rueda's going to have to be careful as well not to get a track limits warning. And that squabbling there at the end of the lap has seen Colin Vire and the likes of Asman, crucially for the number 63, to close in. So this is now a lead group of, what is it, nine riders back all line astern with eight laps to go. Typical stuff in Junior GP. That's all it takes. One sector of the leading two, the men in third or fourth going at it, swapping positions for a couple of corners and suddenly it gives life to the guys behind just like Vyra's Asman look at that, <laughs> Rossi style the doctor's dangle, that left foot scraping along the tarmac with dust flying up as a result but he manages to get that Honda stopped and moves through to fifth and he's recovered well after that mistake, as we said just what, a lap and a half ago he was down to ninth but now the Malaysian is back in contention again You'll be not surprised to hear that he's set two red sectors, fastest laps, fastest sector, sorry, of the race so far for Sarif and Asman. We did mention a lap and a half ago that it was now crucial for Asman to start making progress, and that's exactly what he is doing. So Asman now up into fifth place. You can see Rueda a couple of places ahead of him, ahead of Filippo Farioli. Now it is time to get down to business for Asman. It looks as though it's going to be six riders in contention for this one, unless Lynetta and Cruces in seventh and eighth can just find a Second Whoa. gear, mistake, mistake for Piqueras. He runs wide at the penultimate corner and hands the advantage back to David Salvador. Well, he did lose momentum there. Of course he did. He went from first to third. But is that going to be a long lap penalty for exceeding track limits? We'll have to wait and see. Not quite the fastest lap of the race for Asman as Felipe Farioli tries to duck up the inside of Angel Piqueras at turn two. And he's left the door wide open for Asman, but he's going to get the cutback down into turn four. Yeah, the number seven holds it for now. But yeah, Asman set a really, really quick pace there. Not quite the fast lap, as we said, but he's got his head down now. He can see his target, Jose Antonio right ahead. I think what we're going to get here. Well, we're Not back. sure to the live action and so it should be as well because there goes Rueda and for the first time since he made that mistake at turn number 15 
the world championship leader is back in front of this one here with 10 of 17 laps completed salvador manages to battle his way back through to second despite pressure but there goes Whoa. farioli how close was that we know he's good on the brakes into turn 10 but that nearly ended in disaster for the italian and potentially a couple of others as well I thought that was going to be about a three and one there for Filippo Farioli up at turn 10, but he didn't quite make it stick. Is he going to hand it round the outside of David Salvador? He's onto the green there. He's onto the green at turn 10 as well. So Filippo Farioli does need to be careful. I know he wants to win this race. Every one of these riders wants to win this race, but he does have to be careful not to exceed track limits. Farioli does need to be careful as well. He has got previous, oh. and it's an issue for Colin Vaya, the Dutchman. What's happened? He's looking down at the left-hand side of the bike. And it looks as though, unfortunately, the AGR man is out of this one. The hand goes up, the head now goes into said hands, and it's game over. And as a result of that, him sitting up on the exit of turn 14 has split this pack because Piqueras, unfortunately, both him and Asman, they had to sit up and take avoiding action. And now, what's the gap there? Around a second it is between the rear wheel of Farioli and the front wheel of Asman with six laps to go. That could be crucial. Yeah, the hard work done by Asman has just been taken away from him. He's got to do it all again, if not a little bit more. But the good thing is for Asman, he's got a little bit of tra clear track sorry, in front of him. So as long as Piqueras doesn't ruffle his feathers in the next lap or so, they've both set red first sector. So they've got their heads down and they need to because Rueda is leading this race. It's going to be interesting to see what Salvador can do about Rueda. But first, he's got to deal with Filippo Farioli. He's looking a right menace here in Mazzano. A good move down at turn eight. So here's the issue. Look at the man in fourth place. Oh, it just looked as uh, clearly gearbox or something. It looks as though as he went to shift up, it just wouldn't go as if the engine caught something. I'm yeah. not sure what it was, but it quickly came to a halt for him. And as a result, as Asman and Piqueras tried to get on the gas themselves, they had to, one went, where, one went left, one went right. And they've lost touch as a result of that one, which could be crucial. Meanwhile, six laps to go then, five and a half now as we're heading towards the final sector. It's Rueda leading the way, Salvador in second, Farioli in third. And let me remind you that Rueda will be crowned junior GP champion if he can finish this one in first or second, regardless of what happens to anybody else. So the gap then between Angel Piqueras and Asman leading the chasing pack is down to 0.6 seconds off the back of Felipe Farioli. So they've done really good work here on that last lap to reel in some of the disadvantage as Filippo Farioli goes for a move at turn one and makes it stick. He's going to run wide, but he's going to hold it. Good move from Filippo Farioli, who overtakes Rueda and David Salvador, I think, fancies a piece of action as well. He's not backwards in coming forwards, is Farioli. Every opportunity he's got, if he sees just half an inch in front of them, the number seven is going to go for it. He dived through at turn one. He was late, late, late on the brakes, ran a little bit wide as well, which has compromised the guys run behind them both. Rueda and Salvador not able to get the pace they wanted through sector one. And just that moment has allowed Piqueras and Asman to get back in on it once more. But there goes Rueda, bouncing back at turn eight. He'll run wide though and we know how good Farioli <laughs> is on the run towards turn 10 it's going to have to be something special to be able to do him on the brakes and I don't think that's going to be the case he went defensive and he manages to hold on to the lead and as we assumed Piqueras for exceeding track limits one too many times will have to go through the long lap penalty loop before this race is over yeah, disaster then for Angel Piqueras. We did predict that coming, didn't we? Unfortunately, for the number 18, so he's going to have to take it in the next few laps. In the next three laps, he's going to have to take it. So he would assume that his podium chances are over. This is where it happened then on the exit of turn 15. Yeah, I don't need a magnifying glass to um, spot that one, do you? He did lose time, in fairness, so it could seem a bit harsh, but rules are rules, unfortunately. No arguments there. He was pretty much in Riccioni as he <laughs> came through the penultimate corner there as we come across the line one more time. Four to go, and this is bubbling up fantastically yeah. well. Farioli leads, but not for long. There goes Rueda. He gets his revenge for one lap previous, and now the, ch no! oh, the championship leader takes the lead, but I thought for a second it was all going to end in disaster there. Farioli looking to try and bite back at turn two, and he's so, so near. Nearly got that all wrong. 
That was incredibly close, wasn't it? As Piqueras does his teammate Rueda a nice little favour down into turn four. Overtakes David Salvador, demotes Salvador to third. And Piqueras, does he know he's got a long letter penalty yet? Not sure. He would have been shown it on the board. But as you can tell, when you're in a pack and when the boards are so close together, it's very difficult to see. But he's not stopping there. Uh, Piqueras. He's up the inside of his teammate Rueda and through into first place. He did just throw a leg out there. I'm not sure whether he that's did, to yeah. say he's going to take the long lap penalty loop here he at is. turn 10, which he is. Turns 9 and 10, it pretty much is. This is a, a pretty long, long lap, you would have to say. Look at that compared to other places we yeah. go. He's going to have lost a good four or five seconds there. It drops him all the way back to eighth spot behind Alberto Fernandez there and Piqueras quickly getting back amongst it. will be able to pick up another place as he goes past Verandes, but that definitely, without doubt, with now three and a half laps remaining, has ruled him out of contention. A shame because he's ridden perfectly up to that point. A couple of mistakes here and there. Of course, the one handed him the long lap penalty, but he did ride well to keep himself in contention. But game over for the young Spaniard now. Yeah, 2.5 seconds is the gap to first place for Piquera. So you would have to say, Jack, that it is podium hopes over, especially win hopes over. But look who's jumped up into third place when we were concentrating on Piqueras' long lap penalty. Asman is up into third place, the man second in the championship, heading into this crucial title, potential clinching round for Rueda. As Farioli again looks up the inside at turn two. But Adrian Cruces closes the door on him. So Asman, they're making great progress. Three laps to go. And Rueda has his two main rivals right behind him. It couldn't have been set up any better than this. It certainly couldn't have done. And Cruces is one man who has just drifted into contention. We've hardly mentioned him all race long. Boyd by a debut podium last time out at Portimao. He's looking to get back onto the box once again. And Asman is doing a pretty classic Asman race here. He picked up his first win, his only win in Catalonia last year. We just emerged out of nowhere to pick up the victory. Is he going to do the same again? Two and a half laps to go. And this is, as you said, Elliot, set up quite remarkably. It's Parioli again. He's so, so late on the brakes into turn 10. Luckily, he's not collected anyone just yet, but I must say, every time we head <laughs> towards turn 10, I get a little bit worried. Yeah, it is a little bit worrying, isn't it? It'll be worrying for the riders in front of him. The top three in the championship don't really want anyone dive-bombing them up the inside, but that's exactly, I think, what they're going to get. It's going to get Asman uh, into turn 13, here into turn 14. Asman loses another place, I think, there to Cruces. He's going to be close to any, but he's going to hang it around the outside and keep fourth place. So, yeah, not, 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 not the job that... Asman would have wanted there, Farioli up into third place. I'm just keeping my eye on Piqueras, Jack, because the gap is down to 1.6 seconds. There he is, and he is about to set, I think, the fastest lap of the race. He's pushing so, so hard, isn't he? Fantastic to watch the diminutive Spaniard in the background <laughs> trying so hard. Meanwhile, at the front, it's all changed. The championship leader, Rueda, shuffled back down to third spot as both Salvador and Farioli managed to pounce. Interesting now then, Salvador is ahead of Rueda, Asman right behind Rueda in fourth place. There is confirmation of Piqueras' fastest lap of the race and he is pretty much now, there he is on the back of this league group. So we ruled him out of a podium, or a race, race win, sorry, as one of the Liqui Molly intact riders goes down, can't quite see who that is. But Angel Piqueras is back in podium contention, one and a half laps to go. It's all to play for. It certainly is, as Rueda manages to pick up second, but only for a fraction of a second as Salvador manages to bite back. As things stand, though, with Salvador second, Rueda third, and Asman in fourth. This is good enough. It's good enough for Rueda. Yeah. He will be champion if things stay as they are. But you just know a 16-year-old <laughs> Spaniard on the biggest stage of them all here alongside MotoGP. He's not thinking about settling for third spot. Rueda is Ooh. going for victory. He was just on the green there, I think, if my eyes didn't deceive me, uh, just down there. So Rueda does need to be careful. We've seen him do it a couple of times at least. So the last thing Rueda needs now is a long lap penalty as Piqueras gets his elbows out down into turn 14. He can smell a podium, if not a race win. This is brilliant from Piqueras. 
battling his way through. He was, what, four seconds of drifting in the yeah. space of a couple of laps. He's right there. As we start the final lap, then what a race this has been. 16 fantastic laps. Are we about to see a crescendo in Masano? Farioli leads them across the line with Salvador in second and, crucially, Rueda in third. If the 16-year-old stays there, he will be champion, but we've got one lap to go. Here comes Pekeras up the inside of Asman. That is not what Asman needs. Pekeras getting out of shape inside at turn three. It's incredibly close between the number 18 and 63. Asman trying to hold it round the outside, but Pekeras gets the inside line, moves his way into fourth place, and now has Rueda, his teammate, up ahead of him. Crucially, Salvador ahead of Rueda, but Rueda holding firm in third place. This is good enough for him so far. Farioli is over track limits there on the exit of turn number six. We'll have to keep an eye on that one. The number seven definitely on the green as here comes Rueda. Look up the inside he manages to get the job done Pikeras. into second at turn 10 and now Pikeras is there holding a much much tighter line they're almost three abreast as we head towards turn 10 but Rueda holds on for second and that has just allowed Farioli to take a couple of bike lengths clear of the guys behind he doesn't know that though he goes defensive and he crucifies himself down this back straight suddenly he's lost all of his drive and Rueda is back in it it's all going to come down to the last sector, turn 14, the tight hairpin. Are we going to see drama? David Salvador needs to make up some time on Pekeras and especially the number 99, Rueda. As things stand, Rueda is going to be crowned the 2022 champion, but it all comes down to it. Here we go, into turn 14 for the final time. Farioli goes as defensive as he possibly can do, but goes wide. He goes wide, an opportunity possibly, but he swings back across the front wheel of Rueda in towards the final corner. Here we go, it's the 7 versus 99. Farioli will take it, surely now as we exit the final corner it's going to be a debut win for the gas gas ass bar man farioli takes victory but rueda coming across the line in second will be crowned the 2022 junior gp world champion fantastic stuff from jose antonio rueda fully fully deserved the crown in 2022 what a race we've just witnessed jack Absolutely sensational stuff in Junior GP. If Farioli did exceed track limits on the last lap, then we could have a change in proceedings, but it doesn't really matter. No matter what happens now, Rueda is the 2022 title winner, and I think it's just about sinking in. It certainly is. I'm going to have to take a second look at what happened on the run between the penultimate corner and the final corner. There was definitely a couple of wheels over the track limits, but one thing I do know is that the 99 kept it on the tarmac. He came across the line in second, and that is good enough to be crowned the 2022 Fi Network FIM Junior GP World Champion, and deservingly so as well. The 16-year-old has been a class above the rest all year, and he joined the likes of Danny Holgado, Ethan Guevara, Fabio Quattararo, Ralph Fernandez, and yet more. The future is oh so bright from the man from Sevilla. Yeah, an absolutely stunning season from Jose Antonio Rueda. Only finished off the podium once. That was back in Valencia at round two, and that was a fourth place. It's been simply astonishing the, the consistency and the speed that he's shown. He's going to get a nice gold helmet. Traditional here in uh, the Grand Prix paddock and the motorcycle racing world, you get a nice gold helmet when you've won the title. And as you say, Jack, the number 99's future is certainly bright. Doing this in front of, obviously, the Grand Prix paddock as well. Yeah, what a... What a rider for the future to watch out for. Be good to see what celebrations then unfold for Jose Antonio Ueda. Felipe Farioli at the minute is a race winner for the first time this season. Hadn't stood on the podium since Valencia. Sorry, since Barcelona where he picked up a couple of third places. Hasn't been on the podium since, but the number seven expertly done there in that race. Picked his way to the front, was aggressive but fair, and he is a junior GP race winner. But 2022, and really Saturday here at the Mizano World Circuit, Marco Simoncelli belongs to Jose Antonio Rueda. We mentioned at the start of the show just how dominant he's been. His race wins this year have tallied up 34.7 second advantage. You just don't see that in Junior GP and in Moto3 classes where the riders are riding very similar in machinery, different manufacturers, of course, but all of them on 
Very similar paced machinery. And what about this man as well? Angel Pequeras, what a ride. We ruled him out, really. Foolishly ruled him out of a podium finish when he had to take that long lap penalty. He dropped to a good three seconds off the lead. But he got his head down, set the fastest lap of the race, picked his way through the chasing pack and stands on the podium. He is definitely one to watch out for next year. He will enter next year as a title contender, a title favourite for sure. But Rueda going to have to soak all this in, isn't he? He's going to thoroughly enjoy it, the 16-year-old. As Jack mentioned, highly tipped for a Moto3 World Championship ride, and rightly so, of course. He's been an absolute standout in 2022. Congratulations to Farioli, celebrates with the Aspar Junior team. There's Ethan Guevara celebrating with him. Great for these guys to be racing in front of the Grand Prix paddock in front of all well, their heroes, really, of course. And what a setup it is over at the Aspar Junior Team, ETC, Junior GP, Moto3 and Moto2 teams. So a very, very good pathway into Grand Prix. I think that's Xavi Artigas, the Moto3 rider, of course, former junior GP rider celebrating with his compatriot Jose Antonio Rueda a nice burnout that's great to see isn't it always love a burnout always love a good wheelie as well soak it in Jose Antonio Rueda you are a title winner in junior GP <laughs> unsurprisingly getting the liquids on board for Angel Piqueras as we mentioned, an absolutely stunning ride. Remember back in Valencia where he did something even more impressive, started from the back of the grid and it only took him a few laps to get to the front and he finished on the podium there. And if you get a long lap penalty with less than five laps to go, then normally your podium hopes are out of the equation, but not for Hanhel Pagueras. He's proved himself to be a real force to be reckoned with here in the junior GP paddock. Not as much of a force than his teammate, his more experienced teammate, of course, the number 99 of Rueda. Like Jack says, joins a whole host of names to win the Junior GP, or previously called Pim Sever Epsol, the Moto3 Junior World Championship. Of course, Daniel Holgado won it last year, now in the Red Bull KTM IO Colours. Ethan Guevara won it in 2020, Al Cobra in 2019, Ralph Fernandez, of course, a MotoGP rider now in 2018, Dennis Foggia in 2017, Dalla Porta, Nico Bulliger, Fabio Quattararo, of course, reigning MotoGP world champion, the likes of Alex Marquez, Alex Rins, Mario Vinales and Paulo Spagro have also won the title. I'm going to hear from him shortly, Jack has legged it down to Park Ferme from the commentary box. Massive round of applause, deservedly so. Did what he needed to do, didn't he? Never looked really phased, apart from that one mistake he made during the race. But apart from that, regathered his composure and never really looked like surrendering a podium finish. And in the end, that's all he needed. Didn't need to win. Coming into the race, the first or second would have done it. He finished second, of course, with David Salvador, the pole sitter, finishing off the podium. David Salvador will be slightly disappointed with that. Would have wanted a maiden victory from pole position. Sorry to Fernazman, finished sixth in the end. Didn't get the best of starts as Asman and got caught up in a couple of incidents. There he is, Asman, congratulating his teammate. Great to see the sportsmanship. That's Jeremy Alcoba down there as well, I think, in the baseball cap. Be great to hear from Jose and Tony Rueda soon. And help Pacaros congratulating him too. And here we have the final lap of the race up into turn 10. Felipe Farioli going defensive into turn 10. And this was the run to the line. At this point, Rueda knew, didn't he? He knew he'd wrapped up the title standing on the podium no better way to do it he is a 2022 title winner and now he can relax can't he heading to Aragon 
then the final round in Valencia, knowing all he has to do is go out, enjoy himself, try and win the last few races of the season just to cement his dominance on the 2022 title. Another great race in Junior GP. Always is, isn't it? We've seen Moreira obviously clear off a few times this season, but that just shows the class that we are seeing on the number 99. But the podium battles have always been fascinating. Unfortunately, we haven't got a second race this weekend. Would have been nice to come back tomorrow and enjoy some more Junior GP action. But I can see there down in Park Ferme that Jack is with Filippo Farioli, your race winner. Filippo, huge congratulations. What a way to win your first ever Junior GP race. I mean, it was so, so crazy out there. So, so frantic. Can you put into words what just happened? Yeah, it was an impressive race for me. Uh, I, I work hard for, for take this victory because all the season we do a very, very good job with the team and all the all, uh, people that are near to me. Uh, I'm very happy and I want to thank all the all my team, all the people near to me, all, uh, all my sponsors because I, I made this uh, this victory so for all one the people near to me. Thank you very much to everyone. Massive congratulations. Thank you. Ciao. Yeah, congratulations to Filippo, Filippo Farioli. A fantastic win here in Mazzano. He's had a great season as Farioli. Started the race in fifth in the standings, one point behind Angel Pecaras. He's going to leapfrog Pecaras in the overall standings to fourth place. As we mentioned, his first race win of the season, his first podium since Barcelona. He's been always there or thereabouts in 2022, has Filippo Farioli. And now we can finally celebrate a race win. But here's the man of the moment, 2022 Junior GP World Champion, Jose Antonio Rueda. He is down in Park Fermi with Jack. Jose, congratulations. You've been a class above all season, but here on the biggest stage of them all, you managed the pressure, you managed the expectations to officially win the Junior GP World Championship. How good does that sound? Yes, in the field, it, this championship is dedicated to my friend uh, Gomi Jan. And after I say the really thanks for, for my team because all, all season work hard, very hard, and I'm really happy, <laughs> and it's, it's incredible. This day is incredible. Thank you. Huge congratulations, well done. Thank you. <laughs> See you. Congratulations then to Jose Antonio Rueda. 2022 fully deserved title winner. Here's the final results from the race here in Mazzano. Farioli wins from Rueda and Angel Piquera. David Salvador, the pole sitter, finishing fourth head of Lanetta. Asman in sixth, Cruces in seventh, all in the hunt for victory in the end with Buazri making great ground from qualifying to finish eighth. Wildcard for Randes finishing seven seconds off the win in ninth place. Rosenfahler, Facundo Lambias, Marcos Ruda, Daniel Sharil, Alessandro Morossi, and Arby Aditama closed out the point scorers. Kanta Hamada and Tietzi there finishing just outside the points. As did Tom Agorbe, Jacob Ralston, Uchiyumi, Cormac Buchanan finishing 21st on his debut in the junior GP. Torin Collins, Alex Gordon, Hamans Al Suti. Casey O'Gorman crashed and remounted to finish in 25th. Ben Richard Austin crossed the line in 26th. Theo Gordon, 27th and not finishing the race, unfortunately, was Philip Ton, Colin Vire with that mechanical issue. No, Detweiler 
Xabi Suratuza and David Alonso missed the start of the race and wasn't able to get going, unfortunately, for the Colombian after qualifying in fifth place. Should be getting highlights fairly soon of what we've just seen. But first up, I think we're going to have a look at the championship standings. No, we're not. We're going to go straight to the podium where Filippo Farioli is going to celebrate a race victory. But Jose Antonio Rueda is going to celebrate the 2022 title. Fantastic to hear him dedicated to the late Hugo Milan as well, who sadly lost his life last year in the Hawkers European Talent Cup, of course. All these guys especially ones from the same country, uh, are really close friends. They're all on the same pathway, the same dream. So very classy from Jose Antonio Rueda to dedicate it to Hugo Milan. No better tribute to the young Spaniards. Rueda finishing second, Daniel Piqueras there on your right, finishing in third place. And Filippo Farioli and Victor on home soil, of course, the Italian here at the Marco. Simoncelli Mizano World Circuit. The Aspar team celebrating victories. They're getting used to that, aren't they? They're certainly used to it on the world stage in the Moto3 World Championship. That's Daniel Holgado, who was the reigning Junior GP champion, now the 2021 Junior GP champion. And there is Fabio Quattararo congratulating Jose Antonio Rueda, reigning Moto GP. World Champion, of course, and the 2013 and 2014 Junior GP Champion. I think we're going to get set for the Italian National Anthem very soon. As Filippo Farioli receives a check for his efforts. I think it's a check anyway, I'm not sure. This here is the Italian National Anthem to enjoy. I wonder how many times we're going to hear the Italian national anthem this weekend. The Italian fans, the San Marino fans, will be hoping it's another three times tomorrow at least. The bumper race day coming your way tomorrow here at the San Marino GP. And what a way to kick things off. Of course, we had the FAM NL Motorway World Cup title decider just before the Junior GP title decider. And there is three stars of the future without question. They spray the fizzy water, of course, not old enough to spray the proper stuff yet, but you've got to think that will come sooner rather than later on the world stage. Fantastic surf for the trio on the podium. The Junior GP paddock will be back in action in October at Motorland Aragon. That man there doesn't have to worry about anything now. He can just go to Motorland Aragon and enjoy himself knowing he is the 2022 title winner. Should be getting highlights soon. And right on cue, here they are. It was David Salvador then starting from pole position. Got the launch he would have wanted. And helped Keras getting away well on the outside of the front row with Jose Antonio Rueda getting demoted to fourth place off the start line. But he didn't let, let that affect him. Picked his way back through. As we saw, the crash there. Early doors at turn two. Rueda then, you can see there, Picked his way to the front, and that was another huge high side there at turn two. Piqueras then made that mistake, and that was what brought him the long lap penalty. 
That was Colin Vai, who had a technical issue coming out of turn 14. Luckily, everyone managed to avoid him, but it did cost Asman and Pekeras time. Filippo Ferrioli made his way up to the front. He was getting aggressive, and that was close, wasn't it, down at turn two. Luckily, contact avoided. There was Angel Pekeras taking his long lap penalty. We thought that was his podium chances over, but that didn't turn out to be the case. Heading on to the final few laps. David Salvador was trying his best to try and beat the number 99 of Vereda to try and stop him winning the title, but it did come to no avail. That was Angel Pequeras already making his way up to third place. This was the final corner. Filippo Farioli holding strong and won the race to the line to win his first junior GP race of the season. But just behind him in second place, Jose Antonio Rueda picked up a second place and that was all he needed to wrap up the 2022 Junior GP title with a couple of rounds to spare. And what a way to do it on the podium once again in 2022 in front of the Grand Prix paddock as well. The number 99 is a real start for the future. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time out in Aragon where the Junior GP continues in 2022. Bye for now.